What a big week in news to talk about, and our guest this week is from the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Welcome to the Mike Broomhead Show. Well, I got a message. I got a song. Can I get a witness? Tell me what's going on. Show the people. This week is so much going on. We are going to be moving very quickly. Our guest this week is Dan Mahoney, who is the chairman of the Waste Management Phoenix Open, brought to you by their title sponsor this year is the Option Indian Community. We're going to talk about the Open here in a few minutes. Broomhead's best. And, of course, we've got hashtag this, but we start every show up with a roundup we call The Sweep. Oh, what were they thinking? A bunch of girls from Desert Vista High School. You know the story by now. Um, these were, they were spelling out with t-shirts, the best you've ever seen, the class of 2016. Well, when you put all the letters together and you put a couple of places where G's are supposed to be, uh, you spell out the N-word. So a bunch of white girls from Desert Vista High School thought it would be funny. The thing is, so did everybody else in that gym, including a couple of the black students, one of them being the boyfriend of one of the girls in the t-shirts. But of course, you put that up on social media out of context, and it's a firestorm. What a stupid thing to do. I think the girls would admit it was a stupid thing to do. One of them even publicly apologized. One of these girls may lose her scholarship to play soccer at NAU. So it's going to cost these kids for a very long time. And there should be some punishment. But these are a bunch of stupid kids, and that's the way they should be treated. They just did, do I think they're white supremacists or racists in that regard? No. Do I think they did something totally inappropriate? Yeah, they did. They did something dumb. Should it cost them for the rest of their lives? No, no way. On the other side of this story though, later on in the week, the Maricopa County president of the NAACP, his name is Don Harris. Don Harris, on the other hand, I think he's 70 something years old. This guy was being asked, was leaving a meeting. Let's be clear about where he was. He's at the Tempe Union High School District meeting discussing this story about the girls and the t-shirts and what a bunch of 17 year olds did that was stupid. He walks out and is getting interviewed by television stations and he comments about the body parts of one of the reporters. And it wasn't a compliment. It was a ridiculous, stupid thing to say. Then he apologized. You know what he said? I'm effing sorry. That's what he said. This guy's in his 70s. He's at a meeting on how you punish these 17-year-old goofballs who did something stupid with their t-shirts. But a guy in his 70s comments on a woman's body parts and then apologizes like that and he hasn't lost his job. Who should be held more accountable? Who should have known better? The 70-year-old or the 17-year-olds? Let's at least get our priorities together. The fact that that guy hasn't stepped down yet shocks me. And if he doesn't step down, he should. Now we shift to a story that is, um, I don't even know how to describe the frustration is, is building up in me over this story. The Wounded Warrior Project has been a very highly touted, highly respected organization raising money for exactly what their name says, wounded veterans. They've raised a lot of money. They've helped a lot of people over the years. Some former employees came out publicly. CBS News gets the credit for breaking the story, where now they've kind of shifted, and they are only spending about 60% of their revenue on the veterans. 40% of their revenue being used for extravagant um, events for employees, team building, in contrast, years ago, now they've raised over a billion dollars since 2003, but before 2009, when this new CEO came on board, they had spent about one million, a million and a half dollars on, on conferences and things like that. 2014, they raised $300 million. They spent $26 million plus on uh, team building events and conferences and all these other things. Let me tell you, when you've got a 60 to 40 ratio of spending, that's horrible. In contrast, the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans, that organization, charitable organization, they spend 96% of their revenue on the veterans themselves. That's an organization that does the right thing. 
there's a local organization in Arizona called Military Assistance Mission that I'm very familiar with. The woman's name is Margie Bonds. Her son's name was Michael Anthony Marzano. His initials were MAM. Her organization's initials are MAM. Her son was a Marine that was killed in the war. She started an organization to help military families. There's an organization that's doing it for the right reasons. You can give your money to an organization like that and know that that money's going to the families of, of the military. That's what these organizations are supposed to do. If these accusations are true about Wounded Warrior, it's going to change a lot of people's minds about ever giving money to a charity, and that is a shame. I didn't like the fact that they sent out press releases toying, talking about Putin and playing games. I don't know what games Roger Ailes is playing, but uh, what's, what's wrong over there? Something's wrong. But when they sent out that press release talking about, I said, what are these people playing games? So most likely, I won't be doing the debate. All right, here, Donald Trump. What else do I need to say, right? Not going to go to the debate, not doing the debate. Says Megyn Kelly's an amateur and she's overrated. Says he's got a problem with Fox News, except he went on Bill O'Reilly's show to talk about it. All right, here's my problem. Donald Trump has proven me wrong over and over again. Donald Trump, I think this is a mistake. I think Donald Trump needs to be on that dais. I think Donald Trump needs to be able to defend himself. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about Donald Trump. That remains to be seen. But that really is a mistake in my estimation. Now we've got to talk about another big national story, the Oregon standoff, where a lot of people from Arizona, Robert Finnicum, who was the uh, rancher from Arizona who was killed when they arrested a bunch of the people from the standoff, um, John Ritzheimer, who is the guy who lives in the North Valley, has turned himself in but he returned to the Valley, he posted on social media, the FBI wants me to turn myself in, and he was asking for financial support for his family, and he was asking for money for his legal defense. I don't know how many people are going to come to John Ritzheimer's defense. I got to tell you, I believe in what they're standing for. They, they want the federal government to turn over the lands they control, especially in the western United States, over to the states. I think that's absolutely the right thing to do. But what this group has done has become self-serving, and it's about them, not about the cause. Even the local community said, get out of here. We don't want you here. So hopefully this is going to be an end to this standoff. If there's a price to be paid, and there should be, we all wanted the Occupy Wall Street crowd punished for going onto federal land and squatting and breaking the law. Being intellectually honest and trying to be fair, you have to be able to do and say the same thing about this group. We'll see what the fallout is. We'll see how that ends. So uh, lastly, it's the 30th anniversary of the Challenger disaster this week. Um, the mission aboard, remember Krista McCallitz, a school teacher, school kids across the country watching this worldwide. I was watching it because I grew up in Florida. I was watching it from the roof of my high school where I was working. I had graduated the year before and I saw the disaster happen. It was the one time in my life our local newspaper had an extra and uh, I was able to watch that happen. I'll never forget that day. And it reminds me of the space program, the dangers of the space program, but how we led the world in that. Stay tuned. In a moment, Dan Mahoney from the Waste Management Phoenix Open joins us in studio. It's a great interview about a great Arizona event. All that coming up in a few minutes, along with Broomhead's Best and hashtag this. Don't forget to find us on social media. We'll be back in a minute. The Mike Broomhead Show is brought to you in part by Cliff Castle Casino Hotel and Sanderson Ford. All right, you know, we love everything Arizona, and uh, this is distinctly Arizona. We're talking about the Waste Management Open, and with me is Dan Mahoney, who is the chairman of the tournament this year, one of the Thunderbirds. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, and by the way, thanks for not correcting me when I got your name wrong on the radio show 65 times. That was very kind of you not to throw <laughs> something at me in the radio studio. So um, tell us about the tournament, the changes that are happening. First of all, 16 is legendary in the PGA. It's a tournament yeah. like no other, but 16's got its own unique feel. And now you're kind of expanding that stadium feel onto 17. Yeah, uh, 16 has always been the iconic hole ever since Tiger Woods hit the hit the hole in one, right? And ever since then, we've just expanded it, grown it, to now it's a full stadium. I've added more seats there. You know, the fire marshal told us, I'm not gonna let you increase the footprint at all, so uh, we got him to let us go up. Uh, so I built a third deck around the 16 uh, green, oh, added, wow. added 25 more sky boxes there. 
Um, so we're going to you know, have 15,000 people around that hole. Um, but I wanted to uh, see if I could find somewhere else to start creating some buzz. And I looked at 17 and the north side of 17. You know, 17 is a great hole. It's a drivable par four. It's very exciting. And so we revamped 17 on the north side, got rid of the corporate village tents, and I built something called the Bay Club. And uh, it's a double deck structure, really cool looking, high profile, and it's high end luxury suites. It's Ritz Carlton meets the Waste Management Phoenix Open. It's going to be great. It's, um, it's such a cool feeling to be out there. The last few years we go out on 16, but this year we're going out to 17 on Saturday. And unless someone's been to the tournament, uh, being at other PGA tournaments, it, the golf crowd is, uh, is different. This is almost like, um, like being at any other sporting event, where especially 16, and it's unique to watch the younger players and the older players and how 16 is for them. To watch the younger players kind of get the crowd going when they're going to putt instead of having them be deathly quiet until the putt goes in. It's a fun to watch. Why did the PGA stop the caddy races and the other stuff? Do you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there's some different theories on that. You know, they, um, they didn't want any caddies getting hurt, number one. Uh, they didn't want any clubs getting damaged. Because if you recall, those caddies would get into it, and they, yeah. would, they would dump those bags, and they would sprint through the desert. Right. Um, and so the last thing we wanted was, uh, or what they wanted, yeah. was um, you know, something, something bad happening to someone's club. But, you know, um, it's, it's too bad because it was an exciting it was an exciting event. People really got into it. And it still is. It's great. To, and the players know going up to the tee, um, if, you, if you miss the green, you're going to get booed. Oh, and absolutely. they love it. I mean, they laugh and they kind of cheer along. And it's fun to watch how the players have gotten into that as well. And so what you've created is such an atmosphere. Uh, talk about the Thunderbirds because it's such a legendary organization. And you've raised so much money here in Arizona. I, I don't think you get the credit you deserve for that first of all, but second of all, uh, brag about the organization for a minute, because it does a lot of really good things. Sure, sure. Um, well, you can see I'm wearing the Thunderbird crest here. Um, normally, uh, folks see us out on the course in the blue tunics and the silver conch belts and the silver pendant and the beads and so forth. All of that is to honor the Native American culture and heritage in the community, in the valley. And that goes back for 80 years. Uh, we've, it's been the same outfit for for 80 years uh, since you know, Bob Goldwater and his cronies started the group. Um, it's always been, the mission has always been about um, uh, helping folks in the community um, and, um, and to, to spread the word about how great our community is. And so that's what we've been doing and we primarily do it through the tournament. Last year we raised $9 million um, and that brings our total uh, to date uh, to $102 million wow. in charitable contribution. And it's gone to great organizations throughout the history of the organization. Yeah. So how much does that mission of the Thunderbirds and the Native American heritage mean now partnering with, with Ak Chin Indian Community being the presenting sponsor? That seems like a perfect marriage. Yeah, it's a nice story. Um, you know, Waste Management has been a tremendous partner of ours. And last year, they um, uh, re-upped on their contract with us for another 10 years. Um, but we had the ability to go out and find a presenting sponsor. So we met with a number of different companies, and the best fit that we found was the Auction Indian community out in Maricopa. Um, and supporting an event like this is nothing new to the Auctions. Uh, they were big supporters of the Super Bowl, big supporters of the National Championship football game. Uh, so they, were, they jumped on board. They've been great to work with, and the tie-in with our history and what they do has been, uh, been tremendous. All right, so as you've watched this progress, the tournament has gone over the years. Uh, the bird's nest is, is connected to the tournament, but it's also, it's kind of got a life of its own as well. And the great shows year after year after year, and this year's no difference, you know, Dirks Bentley and, and Rascal Flatts. And, but you've got Tiesto, who a lot of people, I guess in our, in our audience, may not know who Tiesto is. Yeah. But I guarantee you their kids, grandkids, they definitely know, because when I started talking about Tiesto, mm -hmm. people just go crazy for this show. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, what we tried to do is create something for everybody. So we've got Rascal Flats and Dirk Spentley for, you know, that, that country crowd. We've got um, Robin Thicke on Friday. But Tiesto on Saturday is definitely going to bring out a different crowd. We had Afrojack last year, which is a, another popular EDM DJ, and it just, it was a great show. Uh, so 
you know, I, I, I think I, I'm, that tent holds, you know, 10,000 people. I, I hope it can hold all the people that show up. And what's funny is with Tiesto, 10,000 people, and nothing. you say EDM or it's a nothing. DJ, no. you would think, oh, a club. No, it's not. It's not that. The show is out of control, and the crowds, they, they flock to oh, see this guy. They love it. This guy has played in front of a crowd of 100,000 in Belgium. So this is, you know, this is a, a great opportunity for the Valley to see this guy here. And, and the atmosphere that you've created with the golf tournament and the, the money that you've raised uh, to go, it, it just seems like a perfect marriage for us here. The weather in Arizona, we always say this is the Chamber of Commerce weather this yeah. time of year, but the weather and the way to showcase Arizona, but a uni unique golf tournament, raise money within the community, it seems to be the perfect fit. What's next? I mean, where do you, where do you go from here? How can you possibly improve what's happening right now? Well, we're always looking at, at ways to improve what we're doing and to increase the amount of charitable contribution that we give. And in order to do that, we got to increase our revenues. Um, and we do that by going out and, f and creating new venues like the Bay Club on 17, which you're going to go to and right. experience, and adding new things to 16 and, and so forth and so on. Um, so uh, we're always looking, every year we start with that whiteboard and, you know, how do we, how do we improve it? And the guy who will follow me as the tournament chairman will come up with the same, you know, same new ideas. And people don't know, uh, you guys live out there. I mean, you're there for how long before the tournament? Uh, you know, January, uh, you know, right after the holiday, uh, you, the Thunderbirds start to flock out there and, um, you know, working. And, and, but many, many folks are working throughout the year. The 16 starts. We start building that October 2nd. Wow. So, um, but we're all out there now for sure. If you haven't been to the Waste Management Open, this year presented by the Akjin Indian Community, do yourself a favor and get out to the tournament. Uh, I've been here for 21 years. I'm ashamed to say I've only been going for about the last five, but I'm going to go at least one day every year. It is a great tournament, and what you do for the community is admirable. So for the Thunderbirds and for the Waste Management Open and for everything you guys do, uh, congratulations, and thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me. All right, get to the tournament. Make sure you get there. We'll be back here in a minute. All right, thanks for being here today. It, it's hard to believe that it's been 30 years this week since the Challenger disaster. And for, for me, I'm 48 years old. I remember exactly where I was, as do most people my age and a little older, when that happened. This is back when the space shuttle was such big news that when there would be a launch, everybody would stop and watch it on TV. I was fortunate enough to be raised in southwest Florida. Now, miles and miles away, uh, probably from maybe Phoenix to Flagstaff away, maybe even a little further than that from Cape Canaveral. But that the, the trail, the smoke trail behind the, the space shuttle was so large, we could actually watch that take off. You could see the launch uh, in the sky. And so I was on the roof of my high school during that launch, and such attention was paid to it because Krista McAuliffe, a school teacher, was chosen to ride along. So there were school kids across the country and across the world watching a school teacher uh, on this mission. And when we watched this takeoff, immediately when you saw those rocket, the solid rocket boosters explode off the side. We didn't see, you couldn't see anything but the smoke trail from us, the vapor trail. But we knew something was wrong instantly. And of course, they were talking about it on the radio. And it was the only time in my life that there was an extra in my small town newspaper. That afternoon, people on the street corner selling them. And I wish I had brought one with me. I still have that and every once in a while look at it. But the space program was such a great thing back then. Living in Florida, there were so many people that were a part of the space program at Cape Canaveral. But it reminds me of how great we used to be where we led the world in technology and exploration. Um, for the generation before me, it was the, the moon landing and one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. And for my generation, the space shuttle and a, and a craft that could return back and be used again was an incredible advancement. Now it's the privatization of space, SpaceX and organizations like that where they're doing the testing and, and returning rockets to, to Earth with parachutes and trying to be the next phase of this. I wish as a nation we were back on track with the space program, that NASA was leading the world with space exploration, where the rest of the world was looking to us for the next advancement and getting to where we need to go. I think it makes us greater as a nation when we do those things. So, as the disaster anniversary is here, it reminds me of great days in the space program and how I wish we'd be great like that again. 
In a few moments, we're going to be back with Broomhead's Best, hashtag this, and to close out the show. So make sure you stick around for that. We're back in a moment. The Mike Broomhead Show is brought to you in part by Cliff Castle Casino Hotel and Sanderson Ford. All right, this is the part of the show where we do something uniquely Arizona and something great about all of us. It's called Broomhead's Best. Listen, I'm not one to make fun of anybody else. This isn't to poke fun at anyone. But let's give Broomhead's Best this week to our Arizona weather. This is Chamber of Commerce weather. The Waste Management Open is going to be here, and we are going to love the weather. And you compare that to the blizzard they're still digging out of on the East Coast. D.C., let me tell you how bad it was in Washington, D.C. D.C. has a monitor at Reagan Airport that measures snowfall. The snow fell so fast, it buried the monitor. They weren't able to dig it out. So they don't even know how much snow fell because, fell because it was buried under the snow. There was a couple of feet of snow. They're still digging out on the East Coast. So whether it's the snow or the cold, all I know is that I'm wearing shorts and a T-shirt on the weekend. I'm going to be going out to a golf tournament dressed in T-shirts. So let's give it up for Broomhead's Best. This week is Arizona's weather. Now it's a part of the show. What's burning up the internet now? What's everybody talking about? That's why we call it hashtag this. All right, hashtag this. A hashtag, for those of you who don't know, if you're a Twitter user, you know exactly what it is. You use the pound symbol, like on your phone. And on hashtag this, it's hashtag something that everyone's talking about. That way you can find it on social media. This week, it's Saturday Night Live and the return of Tina Fey as Sarah Palin. Oh! to take a break from my full-time career of writing things on Facebook <laughs> to fly down her and lend my support to the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> we Americans are struggling. So many of us have lost our jobs at the factory or our reality shows about Alaska. And we've seen our own children targeted by the police for no reason other than they committed some crimes. Now, I've never been a big fan, well, especially in recent years of Saturday Night Live, but this, she outdid herself on this one. If you have not seen the viral video, because we know Sarah Palin came out and she endorsed Donald Trump. Well, what's funny about the, the segment is Tina Fey does such a good job of doing Sarah Palin that there have actually been Tina Fey quotes that are attributed to Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin never said, I can see Russia from my house. People thought it was her because Tina Fey does such a good job as Sarah Palin. This one does not let you down. If you are a fan of that skit, and Sarah Palin's been very good-hearted about the jokes and very good-hearted about the parody, and I'm sure she's going to be laughing about this one as well. So it's not meant as a slam. It's all done in good fun, but it's really something you need to see. So hashtag this this week, find it online, is Tina Fey doing the Sarah Palin segment again. All right, a couple of minutes left before we close out the show this week. Our thank yous. We're telling you what's coming up next week. We're going to do that. Again, follow us on social media. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can always email me here at the TV station as well. We'll be back here to close it out. Don't go away. Now, we are so fortunate to live here in such a great place. I've been here 21 years this week, 21 years ago. It's hard to believe it was that long ago. This is my home. A special thanks to Dan Mahoney, to the Thunderbirds for putting on such a great golf tournament for the Waste Management Phoenix Open and uh, being such a good guest. But if you've never been to any of these events, whether it's Barrett Jackson, Russo and Steele, or uh, the Waste Management Phoenix Open. These are uniquely Arizona events. It is just a great time to live here. So I've got to tell you, I am so thankful. If you have any comments or questions that you want to ask us, you can email me, Mike Broomhead at aztv.com. Send me an email. Let us know what you're thinking. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I'm just going to go and enjoy all of the Arizona weather that's coming up here. So from us here at AZTV7 and the Mike Broomhead Show, we're glad you watched this week. Make sure you're here next week for another big show. God bless everyone. Get more of Mike Broomhead on Facebook, Twitter, and of course weekday mornings from 6 to 10 on News Talk 550 KFYI.